all right, we're back again. Excuse what I have going on back here. Um, and you might even be wondering, what does that have to do with anything and everything? But you know, hey, I'm home, so may as well take care of everything when I have a chance, right? Well, we'll talk about it in a minute because there's even other things that you might be like, that's how is that even related to all of that? And where's our optional setting with the plants that we talked about? Well, we are talking through history. We've been talking about whom? With the, with, what's his name? George Washington Carver. And with George Washington Carver, we, we know he started off, we said yesterday and the day before and other days, he started off as a slave. And we talked yesterday and reviewed that the slave raiders came, took he and his mother, um, and um, him and his mother, and um, like stole them away. And Mr. Carver was only able to find George, not George's mother. And the Carvers raised those two boys as their own, George and his brother as their own. But what was the nickname that we said yesterday that he was called? He was called the plant doctor. And we were over in our optional setting where you could see all my plants that I have over there because women would come knocking on the door asking for Georgie. I call him Georgie. I figured, you know, is Georgie home? They, they had to have done that, right? Um, can Georgie come to my house and check my plants? Cause I think they're dying and I don't know what to do. And so the plant doctor of dying Diamond Grove, Missouri, um, ended up going to different people's houses, looking at their plants and helping them to get better. And he was very well known for that. But as much as he loved going into the woods, into that special place, as much as he loved helping people sick plants, there was something that was missing. There was something that he was wanting to do so badly. And what was that? He wanted to go to school. I, I, just, I gotta learn, Aunt Sue. I, I need to learn all of the things that, and Aunt Sue knew that, you know, I mean, I, I can't stop a child from learning. It's cruel. A child should want to learn and I need to help them. But the only school that he can go to is in a town that's how far? Mm, okay, yes, I heard somebody. 18 miles away. What's the name of the town? Don't look back. Neosho, remember? Neosho. So he was having to walk 18 miles to go to Neosho to go to school. You can't walk back and forth, you know, in one day in that time. So Aunt Sue knew if she sent him off as a 10-year-old boy, he's on his own. Well, thankfully, he found who? Aunt Mariah and Uncle Andy, and he just so happened to, to sleep in their barn that night, and, and she saw him the next morning and asked, what are you doing here, and what do you, what do you want, and, and she's like, come on in, I will feed you, you can stay with us for as long as you need to, and George thought, I, I can't just stay with them and, and not pay them, they're allowing me to stay here while I go to school, I need to do something, and so George decided I'm going to do their laundry because that's one thing that Aunt Sue taught me that I, I can do. I mean, I can't fix plants in, you know, and, and that's not really helping. If I did their laundry, I'll just set my book up over the tub and, and scrub their clothes and wash them. Maybe that, that'll help me get through and that will help them and, and that will show them how much I appreciate them. So he stayed with Aunt Mariah and Uncle Andy for quite a while. A very special gift is where we are on page 374. And it has something to do with what is up here. Aunt Mariah, so page 374 at the bottom, a very special gift. Aunt Mariah and Uncle Andy taught George something much more wonderful than doing laundry. Now, George loved to do the laundry, but Aunt Mariah even taught him how to iron clothes really, really well. Um, they taught him much more wonderful things than that, okay? More wonderful, ooh, from language, did you just catch that? Okay, they taught him the many wonderful things that he could learn by reading the Bible. That's better than any, you know, book learning or laundry learning or anything that he could have. Every Sunday, they took him to church where George listened closely. They even gave him a special gift. A Bible, 
of his very own. Now George knew that someone really was watching over him. Remember when he was out in the woods and he's like, I feel like someone has to be caring for me because someone is taking care of these plants and someone is, you know, there's got to be a plan for my life. Now he knew who that someone was. More importantly, he knew who that someone was. It is wonderful that God has a plan for each thing he has made. That means he has a special plan for me too, doesn't it? Asked George. That's right, George, smiled Aunt Mariah. Make sure you use what God teaches you and share it with others. Don't keep it to yourself. Whatever God teaches you, you share it with somebody else. George moves again. Oh my goodness. He already left Aunt Sue and Uncle Mose and stayed with Aunt Mariah and Uncle Andy. Now he's leaving again. George attended the tiny school in Neosho for one year and learned all that he could. Now he was ready to move to another place with another school. George wanted to keep learning. It wasn't enough. I, I, I've learned everything I can from this school, but I need more. Is that how our attitude is? Do we keep wanting to learn more? We should. There's so much for us to learn. The Watkins family hated to say goodbye. I mean, George must be pretty special. Aunt Sue and Uncle Mose are like, bye, we don't want to let you go. Aunt Mariah, Uncle Andy, they're devastated to let him go. But they did. They loved him as much as a son. He's been so well taken care of. God took care of him. Again, George was completely on his own. From town to town, he traveled in many towns. He set up a laundry business. Soon the news spread around town that this young man could launder starch and iron clothes better than any woman in town. Now, I just love this because I just think that what happens is, you know, Miss Davies, you know, she needed somebody to do her clothes and because she, you know, just had a baby and she's trying to take care of her, her baby and her husband and, and her five other children and it's just too much. And so Miss Davies said, you know, um, okay, son, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my clothes and, and uh, you know, whatever, however they come out, I don't care as long as it's done, it's, it's going to be helpful. And George took Miss Davies clothes and, and he did, you know, his job, he laundered them the best that he could. He believed in doing things well. He ironed them beautifully and he brought them back to Miss Davies. And I think she said, well, I declare, George, you did a great job on my husband's shirts and his pants. I've never seen them look so quick. You are amazing. I'm going to give you some extra money for that. Um, and then she probably saw her friend, Miss Roberts. Huh? Lori Jean, you think you can do some laundry? Well, honey, there is a new man in town. His name is George Washington Carver. And Gloria Jean, I'm telling you, he can do laundry better than you. Those shirts ain't nothing compared to what my, my husband's shirts look like because of Mr. George Carver here. I'm telling you, I declare, I don't believe a word you're saying. You have no idea how well I launder my husband's shirt. I'm just telling you, Gloria Jean, you, you this boy, he can. And then Gloria Jean was like, fine. I will bring my clothes to this new fangled laundry business and we'll see. We'll just see. And gets the clothes back and her husband's like, Gloria Jean, what a great job you did on my clothes this time. They look all, Herbert, I didn't even do, you know, I just imagine there must have been so much talk going on that there's a new person in town and he does laundry better than any of the women in town. He was such a hard worker. Can you stop putting that in your mouth, please? Sorry. Um, such a good hard worker. George was proud of these comments that, you know, these women are just, you know, whispering, oh, you got to bring your clothes to George. George, he knows what he's doing. He's so good at doing laundry. You got to bring your clothes. And he could, you know, overhear them. He was proud of those. He was not ashamed to do honest work, no matter what it was. But he never dreamed of doing laundry for the rest of his life. I mean, I, I mean, I love the smell of laundry, you know. Oh, I love the smell of um you know, the, the um, fresheners and, and the smell of laundry soap. I love it all. 
but I don't, I'm not going to do that for the rest of my life. It was just a way to earn money to go to school. Things were not always easy for George, but he was diligent, hardworking, and eager to co overcome any obstacles in his way. Third grade. There are some of us that have obstacles. There are obstacles to our learning. There are things that kind of um, are in our heads that, that get in the way. Don't let those obstacles overcome you. You try to overcome them. Look what George Washington Carver once said. Stop and think. Education is the key. We've been talking about keys a lot today. To unlock the door of freedom. What do you think he meant when he said this? I want you to talk that over with your parents. But it's the education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. And you think, think about what these slaves, you know, weren't allowed to do and were finally allowed to do afterwards and how that could unlock that golden door of freedom. Okay. George goes to college. George finally entered Simpson College. He added Washington as his middle name and has been known as George Washington Carver ever since. Sounds like Booker T. Washington, right? How did George pay his way through college? He did other students' laundry. I mean, that good thing Aunt Sue taught him that as a young boy when he wasn't able to go out and help in the fields with his uh, Uncle Mose and his brother. Good thing Aunt Mariah taught him how to, to um, do ironing so well. He paid for his college with simply doing the other students' laundry. For a while, George studied art. His paintings were beautiful. He especially liked to paint flowers and plants. He had not forgotten about his secret place in the woods. His art teacher was so impressed with his knowledge of plants that she encouraged him to go to Iowa State University. So he started off at a smaller college and she said, you need to go to a bigger college. There, you, there's so much more that you could find out. Um, she encouraged him to go to Iowa State University and study plants even more. So he did. Here he found the answers to many of those questions that he's had since he was a little boy, but there were always new questions to ask. When George graduated, he was one of the school's best students. He was honored to be the first African American to graduate from Iowa State University. He could have said, oh, I'm just a slave. I'm not as smart as everybody else. I didn't get to go to school as often as everybody else. I had this problem and I have, I didn't even have a place to live. I didn't even have money. He didn't let any obstacles stop him from doing what God called him to do. Boys and girls, don't let anything stop you. Not online learning, not any difficulties because God has a purpose for your life. And if you give it to him and do your best, he will get you through. George Carver was the first African-American to graduate from Iowa State University when it could have looked like he never would have been able to do that. He was a hard working guy that did not let things get in his way. The university wanted to keep George working with their school, but Iowa State and George knew how important it was to study plants and soil. He stayed on and became the first African-American teacher at Iowa State University. Not only did he graduate, but now he's a teacher there. Were there ways to help the soil grow better plants? Were there ways to make plants bigger and stronger? He would find out. George Washington Carver loved his work. A new job. When someone does an excellent job, news spreads quickly. Many people heard of George Washington Carver and many wanted him to work for them. Oh, Mr. Carver, could you please come work for us? Could you please come? Because he was so good. Everybody wanted him. But Mr. Carver said no. He loved his work at Iowa State University, and he loved the people that he worked with. Nothing could make him happier. Or could it? One day, do you see the name, third grade? Booker T. Washington of Tuskegee, Alabama, heard about George Washington Carver and the wonderful work he was doing with plants. Farmers in the South could learn many useful things from Mr. Carver, thought Booker T. Washington. Maybe he would come and work at Tuskegee Institute. With that thought in mind, he sat down and wrote Mr. Carver a letter. As Mr. Carver read Mr. Washington's letter, he remembered that God has a plan for everyone. Perhaps this was God's plan for him. 
he wrote Mr. Washington back. He said, I am looking forward to a very busy, pleasant, and profitable time at your college and shall be glad to cooperate with you in doing all I can through Christ who strengtheneth me to better the condition of our people. He would move to Tuskegee. We're going to have to stop there and we're going to have to find out what else happens with Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver at Tuskegee Institute now tomorrow. All right. Stay tuned. We'll find out more soon.